You also said 9.7 WGCC, which is heard was Blur with Song 2. Now it's, now it's time to talk about hockey. We will start off with the Amherst. Um, they'll be taking on the Syracuse Crunch in the playoffs. And they should have a... They sh- it's been an up and down season. It started off very good. They went 18-6-6. Um, six and six. But then they Bottle started making them call-ups. And they only won like 8 of the next 20 games. But they went 7... They went 7-2-1 and one when they got those reinforcements back. So, they beat the Syracuse Crunch um, 4-2. Uh, they lost on Wednesday with one nothing, but they barely outshot them. So, they have a lot of momentum on their side. I expect the Amherst to win this series. And I'm hoping that they... Um, and for, if you're a Sabres fan, you just got to hope that the Amherst um, can make a deep playoff run. Because that will sell, that'll show that this organization has a lot of depth. It'll get them deep into the playoff. <laughs> it, it'll sell some hope that the, the things will turn around. And, I mean, another couple of things that can help us win the lottery. That's two things I'll talk about next week. Um, the NFL draft and the NHL draft. Well, both the Bills and the Sabres have the prospective number one picks in those sports. But the Amherst just need to take care of business. I mean, Chris, unfortunately, they still got some injury problems. Chris Gulo and Gulli and Gulli are out, so that's a concern. Um, other concern is backup goaltending. I mean, I'm glad Allmark's back, but they don't really have very good the, the Sabres Amherst don't really have a lot of good goaltending that's the number one priority this offseason in my opinion um I'm not saying the Sabres had better goaltending things were <coughs> I'm not saying if the Sabres had better goaltending they would make the playoffs I mean the offense and the defense are both a mess respectively but if they had better but if they could get some better goaltending I don't think they would be last place in the league I think that's the biggest weakness in the teams and they need, they really and Bottle really needs to address it this summer. I mean, all marks look good. I think he's going to be the Sarah's goaltender next week, next year. But um, they like I said, they they got a lot of work. Bottle has a lot of work to do. He's going to be very busy this off season. On to the NHL playoffs. Maple Leafs um came back to beat the Bruins four two. They needed to stop the bleeding because they got blown out two times in Boston. Um. They lost both games by a combined score of 12 to 4, but the Leafs weren't as bad as the scores in games 1 and 2 said. It's impossible to play well in the course of getting jumped 5 to 1 or 7 to 3 in back to back games. But the run of the play in those nights wasn't quite as offsided. The Bruins were pretty dominant in game 1. They controlled 65% of the shot attempts at even strength, <coughs> and even had a 25 to 14 even strength advantage in the scoring chances. But even then, the highest danger chances that came right in front of the net favored the Leafs, 7 to 5. They constantly took pucks close to Tuka Rask. They rarely finished goaltender, and go- they rarely finished, and goaltender Frederick Anderson, that five goals out of 40 shots, didn't keep it in a minute. In game two, the tie turned to the Leafs' favor. They dominated the possession game, registered 63% of the game's even strength shot attempts. The scoring chances were reversed in game one. With the Bruins getting a few more in high danger areas, but the Leafs were having the most more overall. The Bruins spent most of the game with a big lead, contributed to some of that, but even the score adjusted advanced static, like the Leafs' effort, the, the, the Anderson, Anderson had given up three goals in the first five shots, and they got yanked. Goal 10 was the biggest problem for the <coughs> Leafs in those first two games. Um, so, that, that, just like the Sabres, the Leafs need to address goaltending. But the Leafs have more depth, and they have, that's why they have in the playoffs and the Sabres are not. Um, they, and then for Game 3, they didn't change much to get a better result. Um, by some of those possession merits, the Leafs were worse in victory than they'd been in defeat. The Bruins had a slight overall attempt edge and a, and a couple more chances, all leading to a 40-27 advantage in shots. Boston was a little bit better in carrying the play, just like the Leafs had been in Game 2. But it didn't matter. Hockey's a weird sport, and on a night that when your goalie makes saves like this one, you have a chance. Toronto got some officiating help, too. 
The Leafs' first goal came on the power play in the first period that the referees put the Bruins Tyson Nash in the penalty box for delay game, and it's all off his end. The problem is Nash's clear attempt had hit the glass before going over. He should have been penalized, and James Van Rita should have gotten the chance to beat Rask with a comfortable poke in left end for the crease. But this is but a fit. I know you can't blame officiating for um your successive failure. Good teams create their own luck, but like what Lee's did, um, they made some great individual plays. Anderson's preposterous save with on a stick on a pat, pat stick shot. I know it was Patrick Marlowe's insurance goal just before that, which involved a 38-year-old skating puck along the edge of being him. Rask is under his arm. The margin of victory, the margin between getting crushed and winning by two goals in the playoffs doesn't have a bit. Doesn't have to be big. Toronto did some good things in Game Three, and they did some bad. But just like before, the series was never as ugly as the Bruins made it look. Trials in a hole, but it doesn't take a lot to dig out. A win game four would solve their problems. They can't win the series unless they win in Boston, and the worst thing that can happen to the Bruins as of Thursday is a flight home to a home by advantage for the best of three. The Leafs have no reason to live in fear, though. They've won in Boston before, most recently 4 1 decision in February, and three game series would be sure not to, to any long term advantage advantages. Losing the game four will make this all moot. It would be difficult for Toronto to come back three to one, but the Leafs are within thar- arms reach. So that's the start. Um, so I think ball. I think um, it's definitely a. I'm definitely gonna be a close series. I def- as much as I hate both teams, I definitely like that it's gonna be close. Um, other things going on. Um, Vegas Golden Knights. Continue to be the darlings of the league. <clears throat> They're up three nothing on the LA Kings, and just stunning everybody. The Knights haven't made a big show about how they disrespect been disrespected, and they've been talking about their doubters. But many many big names, media members, and fans across the country didn't think Vegas would feel a team like this in their first year. A roster made of expansion teams is not supposed to, players is not supposed to be good. Um. I'm expecting them to hit. I've been expecting them to hit a wall, but so far they haven't. They're gonna win. They're probably gonna win a playoff series. Vegas had built a roster from scratch, but that, but that doesn't matter in the franchise. This is the franchise. But they've been playing a modern style of hockey built on speed and not brutality. It's looked up and down by all old and old, and old watch of play, former players. They, they, that didn't matter to Vegas. Nothing seemed to phase this team. The game of hockey is changing. Speed, skill, skating, and finesse now trump the old-fashioned mantras of grit, physicality, and toughness. <coughs> that's that's been difficult for the old heads to wrap their heads around, and that's what's happened to the Sabers, especially when you consider the tiny rotation the Western Conference has. More importantly, it's providing that Vegas doesn't need to be ridiculously tough, tough to win hockey games. Game three has been a microcosm of why Vegas has been so good. Los Angeles is a, is a progressive team. The Kings battered and pummeled and slammed around the Golden Knights throughout the entire 60 minutes, but ultimately fell short in their victory effort. Vegas not only weathered their all, the all-out punishment in L.A., but the Kings scored three times in the period, absorbing those, all those hits to improve to just one game in the second round of birth. But it's first ever playoffs NHL playoffs to win. The Kings threw everything at the... the, the at the Vegas, they took their first lead of the series, had their star players score, crushed them into the boards, and the, and the and Golden Knights still won. This shouldn't surprise anyone anymore. They're a team leaving on signs of a team help at a deep postseason run. I would want to root for Vegas because they have been in the feel-good story, but uh, next their next series is going to be against the San Jose Sharks, and I want the San Jose Sharks to win because of the Evander K train to hope that it'll turn to a a number one draft pick that helped the Buffalo Sabres. So I'll be rooting for Las Vegas to finish off um, Los Angeles, but I'm pulling for San Jose. Um, I'm going to be rooting against either Toronto or Boston because both teams really irritate me. (coughs) The Leafs irritate me the most because how they how quickly they turn things around how they turn things around better than the Sabres did how there are arch rivals 
I don't want Boston to win because they've celebrated a million championships in the last 20 years, and they, it's, it's showing no signs of stopping. So, yeah, I'm getting a little depressed right now. Between this and the bad weather, uh, at least the at least the Amherst are in the playoffs, and hopefully they can win at least at least a series. Hopefully four, but a, a lot of Amherst fans I've been reading online have been doubters. I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm prepared for disappointment. What are your thoughts? Hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. And coming up next is White Ash with the Pillows. So keep a lot of 10.7 the Music FM. Mm-hmm. 